<coughs> this is the bale of materials. Uh, so how much does it cost to make it? $200. How much do they sell it for? $650, right? Very healthy profit margin. You get it for $200 because $450 are subsidized from your carrier, right? But uh, what is the most expensive component, right? The most expensive component in this list is actually the display. And display they have in this iPhone 5, they have integrated the touch screen and display into one single form. One single thing we'll discuss in the, again in the lecture on display about that. The next most expensive component is, is your communication IC. They are 4G, LTE, and all that other communication chips. They cost three, 34 bucks, right? Uh, your MEMS comes in here. It's again a very, it's an expensive component, 33 bucks. Microprocessor, it used to rule the world in 2000, is actually a pretty cheap thing, 17 bucks, right? ASX microprocessor. So you see microprocessor losing its relevance, right? It's becoming a commodity. You can buy it for 17 bucks, less than 10% of your bill of materials. Uh, if you buy a PC, microprocessor is 33% of your bill of material, or more than one third of your bill of materials. Uh, any questions on this? Uh, I was just going on ranting about it, but yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so we'll, we'll discuss for how much Intel sells its microprocessors for. So your bill of material for laptops is around $300 for a laptop like this. So microprocessors is 33% of that. Yeah, versus less than 8% for an iPhone, iPhone 5, right? This is uh, published by the Wall Street Journal today. Uh, again, same numbers. Uh, display 44, more expensive than the iPhone 4S because now you have inner display and you have touch screen on it. Memory keeps on falling. Uh, by the way, you know, if, if you want to buy an iPhone, Five. How many of you already have? Anyone? One. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Galaxy S3. One. What do all the rest of you use? Man? <laughs> I I bought my first iPhone when I was in grad school. To and that it was five hundred bucks and. And the, the month, when I bought it, six months after, they reduced it to 200, so. <laughs> so the bill of material difference between a 32 gig model and a 16 gig model is, is just $10, because 16 gig more of flash. Flash used to be a dollar per gigabyte when I recorded the first video, which is on the site. It has now fallen to 70 cents a gigabyte. So 16 gigabytes of flash is $10 more. If you buy it from Apple, they charge you $100 more for it. So, so <laughs> I have a lot of friends who work in flash memory company. And I said, I tell them, you know, what are you guys doing? You know. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the most cost-effective iPhone is the the lowest memory. So same is true for the iPad. Battery uh, for iPhone is pretty cheap because it's a smaller battery. Uh, wireless we discussed $34. Camera front one from the back one from Sony front one from Omnivision $18, right? Uh, total bit of material 197 selling for 649 <coughs> This is comparing it to a Nokia Lumina 900. Anyone has a Nokia Lumina? Nokia Lumina, OK. So Nokia Lumina has a touch screen, which is much more expensive than, 58, than, than the iPhone, right? And what they claim is a unique feature is that you can use this touch screen while you're wearing gloves. So I don't know whether they work in a clean room or why do they need to use their phone. <laughs> So, so, so can you t can anybody tell why why do they need a touchscreen? Because they 
Yeah, they're all in Finland. Exactly. You know, so this is, when, so that that's if you think about it a little more deeply, right? That why do they need to use their phone while they're wearing gloves? Because Nokia is a Finnish company, and it always, you know, it's always snows there. So <laughs> they have a touch screen which you can use while you're wearing a glove. Uh, cost much more than it costs to make an iPhone. Sells for much less, much less profit margin. Right, iPad is actually from 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 a consumer perspective is actually a better deal. Their bill of material is hundred dollars more than the iPhone. So they they their bill of material is three hundred ten bucks. They sell it for five hundred. Uh, iPhone bill of material two hundred ten. Sell it for six fifty. Right, more profit for Apple. <laughs> iPad uses a much bigger battery. So its battery is much more expensive, thirty dollars. Much bigger display too. Display is seventy dollars. Uh, processor is bigger too, so it's, it's a bigger die. That's why it's twenty-eight instead of seventeen. So this was back in two thousand eleven. Flash memory used to cost a dollar per gigabyte. Now it's seventy cents per gigabyte, and it it keeps on falling. Apple will still charge you hundred bucks for sixteen GB per. <coughs> Anyway, so how how does it affect so all this? How does it affect the semiconductor food chain, right? Let me tie it together. So this is the total semiconductor industry. Uh, electronics industry is one trillion dollar. That's uh, world. Can anybody? How much is the worldwide GDP? Yes. No man. <laughs> it's uh, six trillion, six to eight trillion, I think. So it's it's. it's Around uh, one sixth of that is electronics. One third of electronics is semiconductor. So you saw the iPhone selling for 600, right? Has $200 of electronics. So $200, that is one third of that is semiconductors. It's growing at a much larger rate. So uh, uh, semi electronics grows. Again, electronics also grows much higher than the GDP. Worldwide GDP grows as 2%. Electronics grows as 4%. Semiconductor part of electronics grows even higher. That's 8%. Capital equipment is like how much the growth would be in semiconductor. So if semiconductor industry grows by 8%, you need to add that much equipment. So approximately 10, 8% of 300 or 10% of 300, that's $30 billion, right? <laughs> See, I know the U.S. Uh, number one export is uh, aircraft. Number two is semiconductor. Yeah. So volatility goes up as you go down this food chain. If it's uh, a good day versus a bad day for electronics industry, it's uh, Fast versus famine for the semiconductor industry, and it's life and death for the for the capital equipment industry. So it, again, if you want to graduate, right, you you probably want to choose where, at what level of volatility are you comfortable at, and you want to place yourself there accordingly. So 300 billion dollars a year. Uh, out of that 300 billion, 50 billion is Intel. Samsung is 30 billion, the semiconductor part of it. And they are actually growing at a much larger pace because, again, they are very well placed in the post PC era. Qualcomm has, it used to be number 12, 13, now has become the number five semiconductor company. Market cap wise, Intel has a market cap of 116. Qualcomm comes very close. Sometimes it even crosses also because, again, People believe that it has a higher growth potential. Market cap-wise, Qualcomm is 109 billion. So how, how does that post-PC era affect this, right? So these are all the semiconductor companies. Again, companies which make chips. Number one being Intel, Samsung being the second, right? TI, third, Toshiba. So where do the post-PC companies are, right? So things we saw inside the iPhone. How are they growing, right? So they are growing the <laughs> percentage changes over here. Qualcomm, 40%. NVIDIA, 15%. How are the 
PC era company is doing, right? Let's look at Hynix. Used to make a lot of DRAM for uh, for the PC market. Micron used to make a lot of chips for the PC market, right? Oil in red. Elpira bankrupt, right? Used to make used to make stuff for PCs. <coughs> so this is how the A6 compares versus Intel. Power consumption four watt. Intel based atom power consumption 17 watt. Uh, this is their 22 nanometer FinFET technology. Sells for $17, sells for $100. Does anybody use Intel in smartphones? No, obviously not, right? <laughs> uh, I was actually very excited. 2011, Paul Artellini was the CEO of Intel. They came with a phone showing in his hand. I think this is our phone. This will be in markets everywhere. Launching first in India and China. India, I was excited. I was excited, you know, let's go to India, we'll get a Intel phone. Uh, it was made by a company, Lava. I was in India for five days. Every day I went to a different mall, couldn't find it. <laughs> no, economics doesn't make sense, right? They're claiming 2012 they'll have a PC, they have a chip which will go in smartphones. 10 watt is their target. This is what is currently there. Maybe two generations down, the Moore's Law 7 watt will what they achieve. This is what they're competing for. So you can decide whether they'll be ever in tablets and smartphones or not. Right? I'll, I'll leave that up to you. And an important statistic, if you go more than 10 watt, you need a fan. Right? <coughs> Let's do some more back of the envelope economics. Smartphones, uh, 1 billion shipments per year, cost of $200, 200 billion. That's 66% of the current semiconductor industry, right? So whoever gets in that iPhone 5 chip or I, that iPhone 5 that will open on Wednesday, uh, those are the companies that are going to you know, dominate the semiconductor industry. And those who don't get in there, they'll just vanish, right? PC units, 300 million. Again, cost 200 to 300 million. Depends whether it's a netbook or it's an ultrabook. Total, 60 billion. Right? Intel's revenue from microprocessor, 300 million, 350 million shipments at a rate of $100 per microprocessor. That's around 30 to 35 billion. And that's their majority of their revenue comes from the PC segment. They are finally. They were forced to admit that the PC market is dead, but anyway, we knew it long ago. <clears throat> so two-thirds of the revenue comes from PC. And a good document which you should all look at if you are ever considering joining a public company is their 10K form. Uh, it's a document that each public company has to file with the SEC. It's available freely. They have to report uh, market, the revenue by each segment. Uh, the management discusses what the risk of the business are. You learn more about a company uh, by reading their 10K form, rather than if you talk to 20 people about that. You learn much more if you read their 10K form. I highly recommend and we'll make a homework problem to make you read one of those. <clears throat> So we are becoming friendly here, right? It's almost the end of the lecture. So Moore's Law, I don't know if somebody told you or not, but Moore's Law is dead. It's time to move on, trying to think beyond that. Uh, so Moore's Law was a law about cost rather than anything else, right? It was about that this cost it keeps on decreasing. 2012, it used to be 10 to the power minus 5 cents for making a transistor. A modern day microprocessor would have a billion transistors, so 10 to the power minus 5 into 10 to the power 9, 10 to the power 4 cents or $10. That is how much it would cost to make an ASX processor. You used to get 50% reduction in cost each time you shrink a technology node. That kept on decreasing from moving from 90 to 65. You only got 12% decrease in cost. Then you got only 8.9. And 22 FinFET technology, actually it costs more to make a transistor rather than it costs to make a 32 nanometer transistor. So, so this is, these are the numbers. 
these are again borrowing a slide from the CEO of ARM. So it shows the cost per million gates used to go down, deaccelerating pace. Now it's actually going up, right? So some people say it's actually a ploy by the foundries because they want to charge more for the chips that they make. <laughs> they say, you know, this many transistor, now it costs more to make a transistor. Please pay us more. Uh, so it's, it's up to you to decide whether it's alive or not. I'm just giving you the numbers. Uh, some people still think it's going to continue for 10 years, even though I still, it's, it's already dead. But these are mostly, first of all, they're old people. They have spent their lives. Uh, you know, uh, keeping the moors on track, and they want to still, they wish that it will continue. Uh, and they say it will continue for 10 more years, but they, again, they said that they'll be selling laptops, they'll be selling tablets and smartphones in 2012, too. So it, it's up to you to decide whether it's true or not. But I just wanted, I didn't want to give you a very rosy picture on it, Moore's law. Uh, it's it's not true. Uh, it's a law of diminishing returns, uh, but we will discuss on where, even within the diminishing returns, where the big opportunities are. Whatever we have learned from making all this, can we apply it to a different field, right? So, very quickly. So we were supposed to cover lithography also today. So may, may, most of this this cost increase is coming due to lithography increase cost and increase due to the lithography. Uh, the prime driver for lithography is NAND flash now. It has the smallest feature size. I want you to watch all these videos, which are already on the site. They tell you what are the different problems with lithography. The current wavelength that is available for lithography is 193, and you are printing features 22 nanometer using that. A good analog is that you have a very big brush, and you are printing very fine line using it. Right, so how are you doing that? So there are two videos which discuss all the different tricks that people apply, uh, optical proximity correction, immersion lithography, so on. <clears throat> and then there are multiple videos which talk about EUV as well. So I'll end it over here. When we come back on Wednesday, I'll take five more minutes to finish this. And then Wednesday, we have two in speakers. Uh, we'll be taking apart the iPhone 5 on this desk. And then I have a VC speaker, who uh, Shaheen, who, major, who mainly focuses on venture capital in nanotech. So he'll come and uh, share his talk about uh, venture capital just in nanomanufacturing or nanotechnology. Right. <laughs>